Jason Hoodman and Rex Kuhn, the commander, your 2021 Grand National Light Superstock Champions. Two wins in four seconds. For one teammate, it offered a chance to divvy up the rigors of a full season. For the other, it afforded a return to a familiar division. The newly minted partnership of Jason Hootman and Rex Kuhn was certainly to a mutual beneficiary, and ultimately it was a championship-caliber effort. Kuhn steered the commander for the light Supers western swing from Toma to Dodge City to Rockwell. But rain reduced the six-hook tour to four, and at its end, the Ford trailed Adam Spiegelberg's detonator black by five points. Spiegelberg has won once each at the Wild West and North Iowa Nationals, but both times Rex was next to keep it close. When the season resumed in Brandenburg, Hootman scored 60 points on two seconds. Bowling Green initially delivered a setback, but Saturday spun a different tale as Jason claimed his second Bowling Green win and trimmed the gap to four. In Wellington, Spiegelberg laid down a 337-foot pass, and the first-year teammates waited as seven others scattered distances between 244 and 371. Rex knew as he helped Jason fire, only a win could tie on points and first and clinch the title on seconds. What followed was the realization of Rex's vision and Jason's dream as the Blue and Silver 6000 gave a command performance before the Lauren County Fair crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Jason Hootman and Rex Kuhn, your 2021 Grand National Light Superstock Champions. Hi, my name is Darren Hartwell, and on behalf of the National Tractor Pullers Association, I would like to congratulate and introduce the 2021 NTPA Light Superstock Grand National Champions, Rex Kuhn out of Morristown, Indiana, and Jason Hootman out of Corfu, New York, with the commander, Ford 6000. So, gentlemen, this is your first Grand National title. Um, you know, you guys have pulled in the Light Superstock class for a long time kind of, you know, as competitors, obviously as friendly competitors. How did you guys decide to team up this year? Well, we talk uh, quite a bit, and uh, I was just getting to the point in my life where my kids play a lot of sports and a lot of travel sports, and I help coach them during the summer. And in June, July is this tough month for me to get out, and I was just talking about either selling it or not being able to participate. And then as uh, we talked about it, this game plan came up, and we said we'd go for it. Okay, Rex, and, and you were on board, obviously, longtime competitor of your own, with your own tractor, uh, a John Deere. Right, absolutely. I uh, met Jason in 2012, and then he built my chassis for the John Deere. And we just got to be close from there, and then after 16 season, I think, I was going to quit, and that didn't work out very well, <laughs> like everyone else told me it wouldn't, and then I had a limited light, and, and that was fine, but then with Jason's situation, what it was, and we're good friends and we thought we could make this work uh, we decided to do this and couldn't be happier good deal so the championship season kicked off the first event was in Tomo, wisconsin rex you were doing the driving early on in the season so i'll let you cover Toma. how did how did things go in Toma? it went well for somebody who hadn't been on one in five years and we were kind of conservative and made a decent pass and then the second day was rained out and we go to dodge city and uh, first day, I think we got second there, and the second day had a little bit of mechanical issue, didn't run right, but uh, all in all went well, and he stayed home and did his thing and tolerated me doing my thing, and then we go to Rockwell, and same thing, got second, and rained out the next day, so that brought us back to Brandenburg, and Jason drove from there. Okay, so yeah, some you know nice new events, you know the the well-established events, the Wisconsin Dairyland Super Nationals in Toma, the North Iowa Nationals in Rockwell, and then that new event, the Wild West Nationals in Dodge City. What what did you think of that facility that that pull out there, Rex? It's a really neat facility, and for a first-time event, they did a good job, and and I think it went well, and uh, we had a pretty good showing of competitors and all, and I, I think it's something that's going to work. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So moving to Brandenburg, Jason, you get back in the driver's seat. Uh, were you a little rusty getting back in the seat in Brandenburg? 
I think I'm always rusty. <laughs> <laughs> After every pull, I'm always thinking of something I should have done better. I don't know. It's it is tough. Um, we talk about it how you know you just not never get seem to get in the mid season form, but. Um, Heck, man, he started us out, got us in good position. We got down there, the things worked well, um, you know, with Rex and Craig there, my dad, and uh, all the people that come to help. You know, we had some good runs down there, and it got us in a good spot to make a run at it. Right, so you kept it close, going to the National Tractor Pulling Championships in Bowling Green. Um, tell us about, about the experience at the in Bowling Green. Uh, well, the first run, we had it set up good, and for some reason, it went to the right. The tractor usually goes pretty straight. Um, didn't have the finish we wanted. I think we ended up seventh. Lost some points there. Um, I didn't. I kind of get a little uh, upset when things don't go right because I did, just trying to figure it out why it did what it did. It's nobody's fault or anything like that. And um, you know, it's just a team effort, and we just kind of figured it out and you know went forward with it and. Uh, we're blessed to have a great run the next time and get a first out of it. But, you know, after that first run at Bowling Green, they were kind of like, like, man, Hoopman's on suicide watch. Watch out for this dude. He's a little, uh, you know, beside myself because, you know, I blame myself for a lot of stuff. And I uh, put it on my shoulders and, you know, and it was misfortune. I, I wanted to do it for everybody. And, and luckily I came out the next day and we got it together and uh, got a win out of it. Okay, so you won in Bowling Green. You're four points back going into the final hook of the season, the Friday Night Spectacular in Wellington, Ohio. I mean, everything really needed to line up for you there, and, and it really did. So, you know, Rex, I'm going to ask you the question. Uh, as you're getting ready to pull, uh, you know, as Jason's getting ready to get on the track, what, what was going through your mind, and where were you? By the time he's ready to pull, with all the stars had aligned. You know, there was a lot of things that had to happen. We were fortunate enough that they did, and... And by then, we're both kind of that way. He's in the zone, and you just leave him alone, and you let him do what he does. And you know he's capable, and you know the tractor's capable. You just you just hope things can work out for you. But everything just kind of came together, and it was just a dream come true. It's what you know everybody wants to do is to to get a championship and to get it the way we did, and and to, and to do it together. You know, it's a little odd probably that we're partners on something like this but it's worked well it's it's really been fun and and he went out and laid one down and it was a monster yeah that was an absolute monster pass jason from the seat how did that feel i mean did you have a good feeling i did um well actually when i was first getting there get, getting on a tractor getting ready to go i watched uh, the big screen is at the end of the track and i could see it and i saw jordan go and i thought man oh my gosh and i thought um I just I I saw him go past uh, the 337. I thought, man, he just opened the door, but not my much. But 371, he heck, he had a lay, heck of a run he laid down that time, and and I just you know told myself give it the best you got. And when it when I lit it up and went down there, and when it's, when everything stays put and the stack stays straight, I thought we had a good run. I didn't know where we were at at the end, and I got to the end and. Uh, Craig was smiling. When Craig's smiling, you know, we had a, we gave it the best shot we had. And when uh, I heard over the mic from Dan Flagman, I heard 376. So then I knew. Yeah, that was that was a truly monster pass. What a way to win a Grand National Championship. You know, end up tied for the season in points. You win it on second place finishes throughout the season. You guys had four of them throughout the season to clinch that title. Jason, I know you've been chasing this for a long, long time. You've had a lot of success. How does it feel to finally finally clinch that championship? Oh, uh, it feels good. It's it's tough. The competition's so tough. You have to have things go right all the time. I've been in probably better situations to win it and not have it get it done. And you know, with Rex starting it out and the family support that we have and our in our friend support that we have, you know, it was just the the stars aligned and it was meant to be. And I couldn't be happier. It was it's uh in, in like I said, the competition in our class. You know, the top tractors can, anybody in that class can go ahead and win it that day. And we needed some tractors to lay down some runs that they've been struggling a little bit, and they did. And uh, it was just good for the whole class. Absolutely. Rex, this is your first championship, too. What does this mean to you, and how did it feel? Oh, it, it means a lot. I mean, it, anyone who does this, 
that's in the back of your mind. This is what you do it for. And you sometimes tell yourself it's not that important, but it is. Yeah. You know, and I've been doing it for 15 years. And it, it was kind of a goal at the beginning of the season when we started this, but it wasn't the main goal. We're going to go and have fun and do our job. And, and then for it to all work out and then in the fashion that it did. And, and Jason's dad, Mark, getting to go this summer, who's the first time for him to really be out on the road. And, and he did a fantastic job. And it, it's just been a lot of fun. It, and it just all worked out and kind of still don't really believe it. But we'll take it. Absolutely. So, Rex, you said you've been pulling 15 years. How did you get started in the sport? Uh, just watching and all that when I was a kid. And my brother pulled a farm stock tractor when I was a kid and then didn't go forever. And then started going and got the bug. And, and it's a disease that you can't ever really kick. And it's a good disease, though, because, you know, we get to meet people like yourself and just all the other competitors. And it's just a really cool thing of of who you meet and what you get to do. And I never dreamed we'd get to do anything like this. And for it to happen, it's, it is, it's a dream come true for an old man. It's a dream come true for anybody. And you're right, Rex. I mean, it really is the people you meet. You know, Rex, you're from Indiana. Jason, you're from New York. You guys teamed up together, won this championship. You know, it is, it's cool. You get to meet people from around the country and around the world in our sport. So Jason, I know you've been pulling a long time as well. How did you get started in the sport? Uh, well, obviously, my dad's been pulling since I was little. You know, he's been pulling 40-plus years, and I, I think he's the best light super or, or super stock puller New York State's ever had myself. And it's big shoes to follow. So, um, uh, he, and he's, you know, helps you out, but he also makes you think, you know, makes you go out and do it yourself, and that helped me out a lot. Good deal. So, Rex, you mentioned that, that Jason built a frame for your, your tractor that you had. Um, Jason, tell us a little bit about Hoop, Hoopman Custom Tractors. Well, there's this, you know, mainly me and a few friends that come over to help at times. And um, I got Charlie at CGR Machine. He cuts me out a lot of parts. He helps me engineer stuff. And uh, we just, you know, design the pieces of parts and I get to fabricate them together. It's all just guys, that, you know, local guys collaborating together to put something together. And, you know, we've been fortunate that, you know, it's worked out well. And, you know, even when things don't, go the way you think they ought to go we recalculate and uh, come back and things are uh, really working well and uh, business is doing well that's great because you do have another full-time job this is kind of a truly a sideline business for you yeah yeah uh, ups i've been there for uh I'm a package car driver i've been doing it for 26 years and you know a few more years and uh you know then i can uh, start doing other things more that i uh, enjoy doing and working more in the shop but yeah, it's uh, and it's it's not all bad. I like to do it. It's like gives me time to think and think about what I need to do at the shop and how I want to build something. So it works out good. That's great. That's great. So guys, I have a couple couple other questions for you. When you're the test puller in a class, how do you decide if you're going to accept that class, accept that hook, or if you're going to turn it down and come back? Well, I mean, for me, I've always been blessed to have Craig, so I can always look over at Craig. And he'll give me the thumbs up or thumbs down. You know, he can watch the run. And uh, so, you know, Craig's insight is huge. And if he thinks we can do something better or we can make it run better, he'd give me the thumbs down. We'd make a change and come back. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So on a related topic, after the first pass, if there's a pull-off, what do you guys do to prepare for the pull-off? Which one of you guys wants to? Um, you know, if you have time, we'll just look, read the computer out, see if everything's functioning uh, the way it should be. Check a screen, make sure there's no material in the screen, stuff like that. Refuel, get the uh, leaf blowers out, try to cool it down as much as you can, and, you know, just think of anything that if you should change, you know, make a change and go back and, uh, you know, let her, let her rip again, see what happens. All right, sounds good. So one other question. Now, do you guys do anything differently from – um, if it's a, just a regular Grand National class or if it's a huge class like you run into at Toma or Rockwell or Bowling Green? Not really. I mean, it we're pretty much – we started the season maybe a little soft just to get things going, get me going and all that. But <clears throat> otherwise, it's pretty much – you're getting what you can get the whole way through and tiny adjustments but not much. Okay, so with – with the logistics, you guys being located in, in different states and everything, what would you say are the biggest challenges, or the biggest challenges this season? 
that's probably the biggest challenge, just to how far apart we are. So um, when he's mad at me, it's probably a good thing. But <laughs> no, but you know, when the tractor has you know mechanical issues or something, we need to do something. It has to come back to New York, and that's sometimes the biggest challenge. But we have enough friends and people that we know. If Rex is busy farming, or I, you know, I'm working, I can't get out there. We'll hire somebody or find somebody that'll bring it back. And you know, throughout the most of summer, he takes care of it in Indiana, and we don't come back to New York. Okay, great. So. Obviously, I know the Grand National Championship is one of the highlights, but what have what have been some of the highlights that you guys have had throughout your careers, Rex? Oh, anytime you can win Bowling Green yeah. is really cool. I've never won Toma, that and still haven't, so that's a definitely a bucket list thing. But all in all, we would, I don't know how long we'd have to run to ever beat that night at Wellington. Yeah. I mean, that's just about as cool as it gets. Okay, okay, Jason, how about you? I. Uh, I've been real fortunate, you know. I've this is the probably the sweetest one that I've had, you know, doing it with Rex and the way it happened. Um, you know, I've uh, I got a Bowling Green win this year. That was the first time I ever won there. I've won the ring and never won there. I've won at Toma, um, two Louisville wins, a second, and a third there. Um, Enderley three wins at Enderley. So I've been real fortunate, and you know. How to rank them is tough. It's real tough, but you know they're. This last one's been real sweet, for sure, for sure. So, Rex, who do you want to thank for helping you get here? Uh, first of all, my family, my wife. I mean, she's tolerated all the craziness and the quitting phase and all that, and kind of let me come back. <laughs> and and my kids, Stacy, Ben, and Russ, and then uh, Robbie Tillerson's a mechanic for us on the farm and has done a lot. Uh, Champion Oil for sponsoring us with the oil. Uh, Jason's dad, Mark, Craig Smith, who, who he was referring to a little bit ago, has been with us all the way through. And I mean, there just aren't better people than him and the kind of help that we can get. Uh, I apologize. I'm certain I'm forgetting a lot, but we'll let him finish here. All right, Jason, on your end, who, who do you want to thank? Oh, definitely my family. You know, I've been at it for a long time in the shop for hours and hours. and missing stuff and my wife takes care of everything and uh, you know without their support it, it would never happen and you know um, dad for sure you know helping us with mechanical stuff and um, uh, CGR machine Charlie Chad Valier Andy Fairchuck uh, I'll be missing people I'm sure Dustin Fugel Craig Smith for sure Craig's always been with us and uh, always with me I mean he's best guy I know best track guy there is for sure in my opinion um and weimer's turbos and uh scott bobby at uh champion oil you know i got hooked up with him had some issues there a couple years ago and uh he came to my shop and talked me into trying to champion oil and ever since i've uh put it in there it's it's done wonders for me so i really appreciate what they do for us also all right, well, congratulations again, gentlemen. It was an awesome season. The ending was, was amazing. Uh, just a, a great, great accomplishment. Congratulations. Your 2021 NTPA Grand National Champions, Rex Kuhn, Jason Hootman, with the Commander Ford.